information. And here's how we're different. All of our leads are farmed for real estate. It's imperative that you understand what that means. We understand the importance of having fresh data that is farmed for real estate. Uh, just to give you an example, and we'll get a little bit more into this later. 300 people may file, let's say, a divorce or probates or different types of leads out there, but they may not have property. And you certainly don't want to be marketing to 300 people if only 15 have real estate, okay? So that's the difference. Um, it, it, on a two, like a, let's say a six-step mailing campaign, if you send a letter to 285 extra people on a six-step mailing campaign, that's an $1,800 mistake. So that's the importance of us having weekly fresh data farmed for real estate attached. Most of the data types that we offer have property appraisers information. Most companies that we have found are typically quarterly and they are not farming for real estate. Trust me, they're not farming for real estate. And to boil it down to the ridiculousness, to their defense, the reason why they're not, you guys, is 300 people may file probate or divorce in one week. And it doesn't say if they own real estate. Then you have to take John Smith's name, you have to go to the property appraiser site, the tax collector site. You've got to look through 50 John Smiths to find the right one that died or filed probate or went through a divorce that had actual real estate attached. So to their defense, that's why they're not, but we are. Our owner takes the time and hires staff and has a whole research team doing this research for you on a daily basis in front of computers all day long, farming these leads for real estate. That's how we are different. And here's some of the um, information that we offer. We do probates, pre-probates, absentee owners, inheritance, divorce leads, tax leads, auctions, list pendants, cash buyers, code violations, evictions, and distressed homeowners. Guys, you're going to hear a pause every now and again. I'm actually sick. So I'll be taking a multiple drinks of water in between talking, so please forgive me. Um, if you raise your hand during the presentation, I'm probably not going to answer you. Um, I don't want to take time out for Q&A during the presentation as it stops everybody, um, just so you know, guys. All right? So there's some of the ways that we're different, and these are some of the types of leads that we offer. And here's what I experience is, is a lot of people have fears. Fears of working leads that they don't understand, which is completely understandable because when you don't understand a probate or a divorce leads or, or how they work, it, it's like really scary just to send a letter to them because you have no idea what you're going to face. And we get that. But here's what we teach people at Foreclosures Daily. People say, I don't know how. I've never done it before. I don't know the process. It's okay that you don't know how. And it's okay that you've never done it before. And it's okay that you don't know the process, guys. Is listen, what we teach you is you need to know your job, not their job. Let me, let me, let me see, guys. If you got trained, let's say you spent $5,000 on getting trained how to go through a probate. Do you know all you've taught yourself at the end of the day is how to go through your probate when your parents pass? If you get trained on the divorce process, the only thing you've taught yourself is how to go through a divorce. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter. If I'm your neighbor and I'm out, let's say, mowing my lawn, washing my car, and you've known me for five years, you are not going to go and spend $5,000 and get training. Um, sorry, I was just reading the person's question that raised the hand just because I wanted to make sure it wasn't important. Real, I mean, not important, but emergency. Um, and I see that it's not an emergency, so I will be answering all questions in the end. Um, and we teach you that, you know, you don't need to know the processes of these types of leads that you're working because at the end of the day, that training is going to do you absolutely no good but teach you how to do their job. And what you need training on, guys, is your job. As long as you know your job, you can work any lead in the whole entire nation. You don't need to know how to go through probates. You don't need to know how to go through a divorce, how to go through a foreclosure. Knowing the processes might make you feel better, but at the end of the day, you're still at the mercy of me, your neighbor, to figure out where I am in my probate process. If you went out and spent $5,000 on training, and then you walked outside and said, hey, Tangie, I understand you've got a property for sale. You're still at the mercy of me to find out when I go to court, when is the judge gonna sign off and release my property, you know, where am I at in the process? Your questions are still all going to be pointed right towards me. That's the bottom line. So knowing that does you no good whatsoever. So here's what I tell people. Don't spend money on training other people's jobs. Spend money on your job. Your job is marketing 
answering the phone, running comps, visiting the property, estimating rehab and repair cost, putting an offer in, writing a contract. So pay, pay the money, learn your job as good as you possibly can because at the end of the day, when I'm washing my car or mowing my lawn, it doesn't matter whether I'm going through a divorce, foreclosure, whether I'm going through probates, my situation doesn't matter. What matters is I have an extra house and you may wanna buy it. That's all that matters, guys. So let me talk a little bit about the leads and then we're gonna get into the guts of marketing and how to write the best letter that you can possibly write, okay? The legal process, this is for probates. The probates is a legal process wherein the estate of a decedent is administered. When a person dies, his or her estate must go through probate, which is a process overseen by a probate court, unless they inherit it via trust, of course. Probates by far are some of the best leads nationwide you will ever get. They have the most equity. They typically don't mind taking a discount and they're usually extremely motivated to sell their property. When people lose their parents, they're typically like, they're not children anymore. They're usually 50 and 60 years old. I think we can all agree that we're usually grown adults ourselves and established in our own life and have our own property at the age of that we lose our parents. They will almost always more than likely have their own home that want to sell this property because they didn't, and because they didn't buy the property, they've got no skin in the game. Therefore, they don't typically mean mind taking a very big discount for the property either because they didn't buy it to begin with. Now, all probate timelines are very different and each one of them will vary. It is in the best interest of the court, the judge, and the PR to get their probate in, in and out of the courts as quickly as they possibly can to free up the judge's calendar because we have so many cases going through these days. The average probate takes about two to four months and in many cases they can sell their house within the first one to two months because a lot of people think you have to go through the whole probate process before this can happen and you can actually get the house under contract and um, the judge a lot of times will sign off on the property relatively quickly. Now let's talk about a pre-probate. I know a lot of you have been hearing about this word pre-probate. And a pre-probate is basically, a probate means that they filed probate last week. We have verified there's real estate attached and we'll give the lead to you this week. A pre-probate means that as a person who died last week, we have verified that there is real estate attached. A death certificate has been filed and we, we verify there's real estate attached and give the lead to you this week. The benefit of working a list like a pre-probate is clearly you're gonna be first at the door, right guys? You may also reach people who will inherit the property via trust. And in many cases, you could buy that property right now. So the benefit of working a probate is is if they do have to go through a probate, they're further along in the process and they may be more ready to make a decision. But the benefit of working a pre-probate is clearly you'll be first at the door. And if they inherit the property via a trust, they're never gonna make it through the probate process to begin with. So those you could potentially buy now. Sometimes these people may be able to sell their property right away. We also have absentee owners. And I wanna let you guys know that I'm not gonna go sit here and go through all 25 types of leads that we offer. I'm just gonna go through some of the hottest tonight and then we're gonna move on to the marketing because that's the most important part of this meeting, guys, is you understanding the marketing and because that's what's gonna get the phone calls to ring for you guys, okay? That's what's gonna get the phone to ring. An absentee owner is a non-owner occupied it's a person who owns a property, but they do not live in the property. And the benefit of working an absentee owner lead is if they're out of state or in state, if they're out of state, you're dealing with more of a snowbird or a landlord situation, right? Because they own a property in Florida, but their actual homesteaded property is like, let's say up north. Now, when you're dealing with the in-state absentee owners, you're dealing with like investors like yourselves, or possible landlord situation, right? But in, in, in such a sense, when you're dealing with out-of-state owners, you're dealing with a person who doesn't live here all the time, and they're not with their property 100% of their time. They're up north for six months out of the year, or they're maintaining it from up north, and they're doing like a rental, 
Um, but in a situation, what happens in a snowbird situation, you guys, is the couple will end up buying a property here because they want to retire here, right? And they'll spend half the time here, half the time up in New York. But what ends, what ends up happening, or Pennsylvania, or wherever they're from, um, Chicago, you name it, they're all over the place. But here's the situation. What's going to happen is somebody's going to get sick. Some, it's bound to and determined to happen. It's life. Somebody's going to get sick, and they're not going to be able to travel back and forth anymore. And guess what, guys? People are going to people are going to choose to to be with their children when they get like that. When they get like that, and they know something's wrong with them, and they don't have very much time left, who do they want to spend it with? They want to spend it with their family, their kids, their their parents, their uncles and aunts and grandchildren, and all of their family, right? So this ends up being a burden to them and it ends up being a property that's just not maintained anymore the way that it needs to be maintained. So it's a huge benefit. And you know the difference between our absentee owners and anybody else's, there's a lot of people out there that will sell absentee owners really cheap. But the thing is, is they're giving you a list that was bought like 10 years ago and they're selling 500 over and over and over and over and over for years. We don't do that. The owner wants fresh data, period. So when you order that week for absentee owners, that's brand new data, never been ordered before by us, 1,000 leads the same week that you order, and then bam, we deliver them all at once. It's all fresh data. So there's more of exclusivity when you, when you order through us, you guys. Now, inherited lead. What is an inherited lead? And don't we get that on the pre-probates? That's one of the biggest questions that I have when you talk about working an inherited lead. Well, yeah, you do. You are going to run into some inherited people on the probate, the pre-probate leads, but you, want to, you still want to work an inherited lead, guys. An inherited lead is, like I said, it's a person who inherits a property via a trust, and they do not have to put their property in probate, okay? But there's just a very small amount of people that will actually inherit their property via a trust and not have to put their property through probate. So we don't want to give you leads just a few a week, right? So we like to give you as many leads as we possibly can per week. So we include the inherited lead, and we feel an inherited lead is multiple things, not just a person who inherits a property via a trust. We also feel a completed probate is an inherited lead, right? It's a property that they basically inherited from their parents. They may have had to go through probates to get that, but either way, it's another step. So we also include completed probates in the inherited list, as well as a family deed transfer. Mom transfers a property to the son while she's still living, she's sick. She's worried about the kid being able to take care of it and get, get it after her passing and have to go through probate. So she went, goes ahead and transfers it to the son now. That is also considered an inherited property. Now the benefit of working an inherited property versus a probate and a pre-probate, we call working all three. I have seasoned investors that work all three lists all the time. Now, are you gonna be running into each other? Absolutely, when I say running into each other. I mean, is a pre-probate possibly going to turn into a probate? Absolutely. Is a pre-probate possibly going to be on the inherited list? Absolutely. But it's called striking the iron while it's hot, okay? And you don't know when the iron's hot. The iron could be hot one week after they die. The iron could be hot one month after they die. A typical person that passes will wait one to three months before filing probate. It's just the statistical average, you guys, okay? Not everybody does, but a statistical average waits one to three months on an average before they'll actually file a probate. So getting it right when they pass is very important. You know, everybody's dying to get on that list. Sorry guys, just a little bit of humor. Anyways, so striking the iron while it's hot, it's really important guys, because you wanna you want to mail to them right when they, one week after they pass, you wanna mail to them right when the probate is filed. That's so imperative, guys, mailing to them right when the probate is filed. And it's also imperative to mail to them right when that probate is completed. So you wanna work all three lists if your marketing budget allows you to, okay? So working the pre-probates versus the probates versus the inheritance, if you have the marketing budget, work all three. When you're picking between the three of them, it's almost impossible to pick between a pre-probate and a probate. So I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna name the first three hottest and it's going to be pre well, probate. It's going to be probate. I'm sorry. It's going to be probate being number one, pre probate being number two, and inheritance being number three. Those are the top three hottest lists nationwide today. Right after that, you've got divorce leads. Divorce leads are really good, guys, because the divorce is a legal dissolution of a marriage by a court or other competent body. 
that when the divorce is filed, we will verify that there is real estate owned and provide you with the information one week later. That's the benefit of working a divorce lead, guys. Is they are all farmed for real estate and it is one week after the divorce is filed. Now on the divorce lead is really, really good. Um, and that's called striking the iron wall top two guys. You wanna hit them right when they file a divorce and they don't have to put this property through the court systems. If they file a divorce with a judge and they come to an agreement to sell the property to like an investor like yourself or list it with a realtor or whatever they're, whatever they're gonna do, they have every right to do whatever they want with their property. It's still legally their property. Um, they're not, they had just literally started the divorce filings and trust me, it is in the best interest of the court, the judge, the court systems, the client, the attorneys, everybody involved to resolve this out of court. So if they can get rid of this property, definitely, definitely selling it to an investor would help them not have to pull through a divorce with it. We also do list pendants. Our list pendants are great. Um, in Florida, they're actually daily uh, outside of Florida. And by the way, all these leads are nationwide, just so you guys know. We literally are nationwide with all of our leads. Um, Pre-foreclosures are still good in today's market. Uh, it's when a homeowner stops making payments on a mortgage. The mortgage has a specific procedure that it follows to take the property back. This procedure will differ according to the state and county in which the property is located. If a lender finds that a homeowner is in default on their mortgage payment and the two parties are unable to resolve the issue of the outstanding debt, then the lender which you know, the plaintiff has the right to file a lawsuit known in this case as a list pendants against the homeowner. Now, list pendants, they're a lot more overworked. You know, this is where you're gonna get your one and a half percent response rate, okay? As I was saying before, probates and pre-probates and inheritance, things like divorce leads are a little bit hotter. And the reason why is because they're getting a three to five to 10% response rate. I was talking to a gentleman today and he said he's doing so good with his probate and pre-probate leads that he's actually getting a 10% response rate. 10% response rate, can you imagine? That's like unheard of. Well, a list pendants is typically the national average foreclosure response rate is one and a half percent. That's the average response rate on a list pendants, guys. Now, don't get me wrong, short sales are still going strong. I have people that work with the loss mitigators all the time and they're doing absolute phenomenal in pre-foreclosures, okay? But I'm just saying that the hotter list are gonna be probate, pre-probate, inheritance, divorce leads, things like code violations. I mean, things like that are just so much hotter. Um, and, and you know, you're, a lot of your seasoned investors are working more towards doing leads like that these days because the competition is so minimal. You don't have a lot of competition. And we're gonna talk in a little while about how to beat that competition, okay? And how to get your mail open versus somebody else's mail going to the mailbox, okay? Now, here's how our leads can help you. If you are an investor, our leads can help you get properties for wholesale prices. And I know how huge wholesaling has become these days. If you're a realtor, it can help you gain listings. The investors and or your investors that come to you to buy property and also your personal investing. If you are an attorney, it can help you gain business for your law firm and personal investing if you're an attorney. If you're a mortgage broker, this can help you get refinances and loan modifications and help your personal investing as well. Now, if you're a first time home buyer, I have a lot of people sign up for three month commitments, you guys, if they're a first time home buyer and actually buy their first home off of our leads in a three month commitment. Um, you can get your properties at a discounted pricing if, if you're a first time home buyer. So that's the benefit of using that. Let's talk about the marketing. This is the three to six step mailing campaign I've been talking about since the beginning of the webinar. And, and, and these are the instructions we were talking about. Now, don't get confused and think you have to wait till October to start your marketing, okay? October was just the month that I started these slides in. So October, November, December, January, February, and March. Those are just months that I used for a guideline of when you're doing a three-step mailing campaign, a four-step versus a five-step and a six-step. And I wanted to use actual live months to get my point across. Um, I'm gonna leave this up for just a second. Go ahead, take pictures of it, do whatever you gotta do. I'm gonna give you guys just a moment.
Okay, guys, sorry about that. I had to get myself a drink, too. Okay. Here we go. So this is the mailing campaign that we recommend, a three-step, a four-step, a five-second, a six-step mailing campaign. Now, if you're uh, an investor and you only have enough budget for a four-step mailing campaign and you were using October, November, December, and January and February as your marketing uh, months or whether it's, you can call it, you know, August, September, October, November, December, January if you want to, um, we would recommend that you do like October, November, December, and skip January and mail February and turn it into a five month. So see how we're turning the three month into a four month, the four month into a five month, and the five month into a six month. I just want you to know the six step mailing campaign is the absolute best that you can actually do. We recommend a mailing campaign for six full months straight. And people will say, well, when do I send my letter? Like if I send it out August 15th, do I send it 30 days from August 15th? Or do I go like August 15th, September 15th? But what you're gonna do is if you send a marketing campaign out and you start it your first week of probates, let's say, because we're weekly, and you send the first set of probates out on August 15th, that next set of probate leads are gonna be sent out on September 15th. And the third step is gonna be October 15th. So you're gonna use the 15th for that marketing campaign for everybody that you mailed August 15th. And for everybody that you mailed August 21st or 22nd, you're gonna do it again September 20, 21st, you know, October 21st, November 21st. Notice that it's, third, it's not just 30 days, it's absolutely the same day every single month, okay? So you're gonna use that as your marker. And you can even take an Excel spreadsheet and just have your leads on there. In fact, all of our leads are downloadable on Excel. And just add columns, guys and put them on a six step mailing campaign and put down in one column, hey, I mailed these guys August 15th and they're due again September. And I mailed these guys October 15th and they're due again November and just keep track of it that way if you have to. But try to stretch these mailing campaigns out as long as you possibly can because you wanna market to these guys multiple times over six months. Now, obviously the cream of the crop, the best for your buck, I mean the squeaky wheel, gets the grease guys and the early bird gets the worm. You wanna to market to these guys as many times as you possibly can. So if you can do a six month, do it every single month for six full months straight. You wanna be that commercial. You wanna be in their face. I'm not sure where all you guys are from, but like here, Morgan and Morgan is big. In Georgia, it's Morgan and Morgan. I mean, if we get into a car wreck here, the first lawyer we think of is Morgan and Morgan. You wanna be Morgan and Morgan in their mailbox, okay? You want them to be so sick of you that they, they call you and ask you to stop marketing to them. That's how you know you're doing your job, guys, is if they call you complaining because you're mailing them too much, you know you're doing your job, okay? Because somebody else is gonna call you because they're gonna remember exactly who you are because you're the guy that mailed them for six months when everybody else stopped after one or two mailing campaigns. Do you know how many people and how many investors I will hear, oh yeah, I'm gonna do a four step or a five step or a six step. Well, you know what? I call them up six months from now and I find out that they mailed one time for two weeks and then they stopped. Because they figured if they sent two mailers out that they would get some responses. I'm not talking about two mailers. One time, these people one week, one time these people the next week and they stopped. I mean, I have people all the time. It's lazy with marketing, okay? That's what it is, it's pure laziness. Listen to me, if you're gonna do a one-step mailing campaign, you might as well hand me your money and just walk away and don't do anything because you're probably not going to get anything, okay? Don't get me wrong. You might pick up a deal, but why pick up one when you can pick up six or 10 or 15? Listen to me. It is imperative that you understand that you're putting your whole life into this job right now. You're trying to either get out of a J-O-B Okay, or you're already out of one, just starting this. If you're on this program tonight, you're trying to learn. So take everything that I'm giving you and, and utilize it in your life today and in your investing world because you're gonna get exactly out of this business, exactly what you put into it. And if you're not gonna put forth much effort, you won't get much forth effort out of it. You won't, get, you won't reap the benefits of consistent marketing. Consistence and patience is the absolute key in this marketing business. The early bird gets the worm, the squeaky wheel gets the grease. Every single thing that you do in life, trust me when I tell you the squeaky wheel gets the grease. I tell my kids all the time, the squeaky wheel gets the grease. And I have swore by that all my life. You know why? Because when my kids were in school, 
I was that nagging parent that called the guidance counselor every month. I was that nagging parent that emailed the teachers to ask how my kids were doing. Because you know what? The squeaky wheel gets the grease. My kids got good treatment. They got better treatment. They got more work. They got more help. They got more tutoring if they needed it. They got more one-on-one. -on -one. They got more of everything, you guys. Because truly, everything you do in life needs to be 10x. And I know that y'all have all heard of 10x. The squeaky wheel gets the grease, not just with marketing, with every single thing that you do in your life. You want to be first and you want to be last. You want to be like that commercial, okay? Now let's talk about the types of leads that you're going to market to for six months. Here's anything that is going through a process, you guys. Any single thing that is going through a process, such as probates, pre-probates, divorce leads, inheritance, list pendants, code violations. These are all different types of leads that have a process that they have to go through and have to follow before you can help them, other than maybe some of the inherited leads, but some will, some won't. You know, some have to still go through certain things. Um, the list pendants are going through the core systems. You know, the code violations, they're being hit every other month. Grown up grass, you know, overflown trash. I mean, the yard's all grown up. I mean, the house is falling apart. Nobody's maintaining the property anymore. On the probates, I mean, you've got the same problem there. I mean, that's, you know, that could be one month, one and a half, two months, four months, six months. You don't know how long that's going to be, okay? It could be very quick, but these are going through a process. So who cares if you're mailing in a six-step mailing campaign and some of the probates are already going to be done by then? Who cares? You're going to get so many deals from being consistent and being that squeaky wheel that it doesn't even matter. Now, here's some unique marketing techniques. We discussed this earlier about the list pendants. I said that I was going to show you guys how to get people to open your mail just by making one or two little critiques in your marketing. Using unique marketing techniques will help ensure that your mail gets opened. You know, clearly, we're going to go through a few of the lame ones that you know, everybody, everybody and their brother knows to use different size, different shaped envelopes, such as wedding invitations, birthday cards, different colored papers, I mean, colored letters. And by the way, guys, yellow letters are absolutely proven, tested, and still tried today, and they work fantastic. Yellow letters work fabulous still today after all these years, still stand strong with marketing. Handwritten envelopes, handwritten letters. I strongly recommend handwritten letters and especially handwritten envelopes on sensitive, sensitive situations such as probates, pre-probates especially, you guys. It's literally one week after the death. Special markings in certain statements on envelopes. Here's, here it is, guys. Here's what you want to do. If you're having trouble or you think you're having trouble working in a competitive market, in a competitive, let's say, pre-foreclosure industry, and they're getting 50 mail a day, how are you going to get them to open your letter? You're going to write the word cash involved on the envelope. Cash involved on the back of the envelope. Now, I know some of you are probably sitting there thinking, God, is that really a good idea? I mean, is it going to get past the post office or the postman or anybody for that matter, right? But I promise you, if you write the word cash involved on the back of that envelope, nobody, and I mean absolutely nobody, is going to throw your letter away, okay? Nobody. Now, if you're not real comfortable with writing the word cash involved in the back of the envelope because there's no cash in the envelope, then throw a penny in there for gosh sakes. Throw a penny, okay? But when you do a cash offer in your letter, there is cash involved in that envelope, okay? So you're technically not, you're not really fibbing there, okay? Now, you can also use symbols. You can just put three dollar signs and then write the word involved on the envelope. Kind of means the same thing. Now, let's talk about some other unique marketing techniques, okay? What about using children to write your envelopes, right? What if you used children to color on your envelopes, right? I have somebody that actually just used school-aged children to color all over all of his envelopes. And that definitely gets people to open your letter because they, they, it's just so unique. 
they just never see anything like that. I have another guy, he has, he has older people handwrite his letters on purpose because they have shaky handwriting and he, he wants the, the Lord writing to look as natural as they possibly can. And, and an older woman writes all of his letters and her handwriting is really shaky. So her letters have a huge open rate. He's getting like a 17% open rate on his letters, which is ridiculous. So there's a lot of different things you can do in your marketing. Um, I, uh, we, have a, we have one of the speakers I know, he puts worry dolls in his, um, those little worry dolls, the little teeny, little dolls that you get, um, he puts those in all the envelopes. Lumpy mail, um, squishy balls. A lot of, some people are putting squishy balls in their envelopes these days because they barely weigh anything. They call it lumpy mail. So they're doing that. There's all kinds of different techniques you can do. Some people are using FedEx envelopes. FedEx envelopes is another good thing. Um, so there's all kinds of different things you guys can do in your marketing to kind of change it up a little bit. I actually hold, um, when I do the classes and stuff, sometimes at the RIA groups, We'll play marketing games, and, and for anybody who's listening that has a real estate club or ever speaks, do this marketing game. Get, get everybody together and hand out five or six pieces of paper and write down ways to get people to open your letter, unique marketing techniques, ways to get people to buy your house in a competitive market, um, mistakes people make when rehabbing their property, and then brainstorm. Have everybody five minutes to write down all their answers and then sit there and have the whole class just stand up and brainstorm together. Do that in your local RIA. You don't even have to own a RIA. Just do that in your local RIA. Say, hey, can we play a quick 10 minute game and pass out six pieces of paper and group everybody up into four or five groups. Play this marketing game and you will get so many ideas from each other. What I'm saying is if you join your local RIA groups, you can learn so much from each other without having to extend a ton of money out of your pocket for all this training, okay guys? Everything I do tonight, I'm doing for free. And I'm doing that to teach you. Whether you buy leads or you don't buy leads, I guarantee you I've taught you something here today. So look at this letter. I bet you guys are looking at this letter going, I can't even read this. Because that was my exact thought. We had a, a woman that works for our company. Excuse me while I take a drink. And then she sent me this, these marketing letters that one of her gentlemen wrote and he wanted me to critique it. And I liked, I liked it so much that I had to share it. And what I liked about it is the things that I found wrong because I can use this as a training technique to help you not to make these mistakes, okay? Number one, you can't use this type of font when you're writing letters. A lot of people you're gonna be mailing might not have the best eyesight in the whole world, depending on what list you're mailing. You know, especially if it's like an inherited or probates or pre probates Some people are older, some people are younger. I can't read this, you guys, very well at all. So the first thing I thought of is the font, the font is just too much. It's just too much. They should have used Times New Roman or Arial or something a little more um, normal so we could actually see what this says. But what it actually says is, Dear Mrs. Story, selling your house has never been easier. As discussed, I can pay cash for your house and you pocket all the money. Well, first of all, what do they mean as discussed? This is their first marketing piece. So where is this as discussed? And if you did discuss it, why are you sending them this letter? You've already talked to them from a previous letter that you sent if this is your first mailing campaign. So a couple of things are wrong with this letter. Number one, the font, you cannot use this type. You can't use this lettering. You can't, you have to use Times, Times New Roman. You have to use Arial. You have to use something a little more legible so people can read it. Number two, don't send your first marketing and say things like as discussed because you've never spoke to this person. I can pay cash for your house and you pocket all the money. No realty commissions make for a sweet sale. Best of all, we can close quickly. Okay. I don't see anything else wrong with that letter except for those couple of things, but I'm going to go on to the next marketing campaign. He has three or four of them. So I think we have a four step mailing campaign and this is his first one. Okay. So big mistake. Number two, dear Miss Smith, I am still interested in buying your house. As you know, I can pay cash can close quickly and you don't have to pay a real estate commission when you sell your house to me. No, let's go back. 
He does say he can pay cash. So that was that stood true in the second letter. So he did follow it from one letter to the other and said, as you know, I can pay cash. So that's actually a plus. I don't see a whole lot wrong with that one other than the fact that I just don't like this campaign in general. But here's the third one. Dear Mrs. Story, quickly selling your house can take away the stress or the strain of showing a lot of people you don't know. Forgive me if I'm wrong, but they don't know him either. So, I mean, it makes absolutely no sense for him to say something like that. Please give me a call. I will pay cash. Again, he references the cash. Cash in your pocket. Call me. Okay, so there's, let the rest of the letter go. And the last but not least, dear Miss Story, are you still interested in selling your house? Remember, I pay cash, can close quickly, and you don't have to do repairs or pay realty fees. So, I mean, I'm not going to say anything wrong with the, back, the bottom of this letter, but you see my point. There's multiple things going on here. They're saying several things in the letters that aren't true. The font is too, it's just too big. It's, it's, it's too all over the place. It needs to be regular lettering and not like all fancy writing so people can't read it. But these are things you don't want to do in marketing, guys, okay? And I'm not trying to pick on this person. I'm not at all in any way. I'm just, I'm trying to show you guys what not to do, okay? Here's an investor letter that uh, a gentleman wrote and I changed a lot of things in it and cleaned it up and now I give it to you guys. The reason I'm contacting you is I understand there may be a property for sale. If there is real estate for sale, I would like to buy your property. I can close fast cash as is in less than 30 days. You can even leave the unwanted items in your house. You don't even have to clean, update, rehab, repair the property. I will buy the property just the way that it is. If this sounds like something you may be interested in, please contact me back immediately. Now, let's take a minute to think about that letter. There's, let's say that I'm using this letter to market to probates or foreclosure or divorce, things where people may have to move, okay? They've got a property that they just got dumped on them in a probate situation. Somebody died that probably owned the house for 30 years. Now they've got all this stuff. Somebody else's stuff in this house that they've got to try to get rid of. Now, if it's their parents, that's probably really sentimental stuff, guys. So this is a really tough deal, but they're going to sell most of it. People typically on an average will sell 90, 95% of their parents' stuff when their parents pass and they'll keep 5% of it maybe, okay? But parents' property is probably not updated. It probably has the old horse and buggy wallpaper, right? Linoleum, paneling. So, I mean, a lot of things are going to have to be updated in this property. So let's look at the homeowner's mindset before you look at this letter. The homeowner's mindset is, oh my God, I've got all this stuff to try to find a place for that I don't even want to get rid of. I'm going to have to have six garage sales and watch all of my parents' stuff just go day by day by day by day, take weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks. And then I'm going to have to have six furniture pickups. And then I'm going to have to rip the wallpaper off and redo the whole house. And they're thinking they're going to hang on to this property for a good six to eight months, right? Not at all, guys. They're going to get your letter that says, hey, I'll buy your property just the way that it is. You can even leave the unwanted items in your house. You don't even have to clean, update, rehab, repair the property. Did you know that they didn't know that until they read your letter? It sounds crazy, right? A lot of people might not believe that, but I can tell you right now, I've talked to a lot of people in the probated situation and they're an absolute emotional wreck and the last thing they wanna do is any of this stuff. So when they get your letter, telling them that you can do all that. Just walk through the house with a box, take what you want, I'll handle the rest. And guess what, guys? The one important sentence that you could put in the bottom of this letter, especially on a pre-probate, the award-winning sentence you can put on here is, oh, and by the way, I can even help you pay for your probates if you need some financial assistance. Could you imagine how many people lose their mom and dad's home in foreclosure because they cannot afford to go through the probates? And if there's still a mortgage on this property, how many people out there that you know live week to week 
most people, right? Most people don't make 60, 70, 40, $50,000 on, on a deal like, like all the investors do, right? So they live week to week. Their family's having a hard enough time at 50 years old paying for their own mortgage and their kids and the people are, the kids are going to college now and they got these cars driving as a teenager. Now, I don't know about you guys, but my kids insurance is just costing me like $2,700 every six months. I mean, it's insane. My point is, is people don't have money to file probates. So you guys are like a blessing in disguise for these people. You are not taking advantage of anybody in a negative situation. You're helping them save what their parents fought all their lives to get to leave them. Most parents know that their kids are not going to move in their house, guys. It's the biggest asset they've ever had that they want to leave to their children so their children can properly dispose of the property and get reap the benefits of all the rewards financially from their parents' hard work all their lives. And you can help them do that by working pre-probates and probates. And here's what you do. That guy that added that sentence and was so clever, he got six wholesale deals in five weeks. I'm sorry. Five wholesale deals in three weeks because he put in the letter, oh, and by the way, I can even help you pay for your probates if you need some financial assistance. And you know what he did? He hooked himself up with a local attorney and he said, hey, I'm working pre-probates and probates. A lot of these people haven't filed yet and they don't have any money. Is there any way if I give you all this business and I, and I bring five or six people to you and say, hey, I'm going to pay for their probate. How much will it cost me? Can you do it cheap and can you do it quick and can you do it for a flat one-time fee. She said, absolutely, because you know what? He brought her five deals that she would not have had otherwise. And he brings her all of his deals now. And she's working almost solely for, and exclusively for him because he owns his own investment company with multiple acquisition people, multiple sales people, and he works a huge area for probate and pre-probate leads. And, and, and she's doing it for 1500 bucks. And she's closing all of his probates in about two months for him, guys. And she's letting him put partial payments down. He's putting $750 down on the front end, paying the other $750 in the back end. And she's making him pay the filing fees and the processing fees. Now, let me tell you how he's doing it to make sure that they don't sell the property to somebody else behind his back. He's actually putting the word and the verbiage in the contract that protects him so they can't sell the property behind his back. But you know as well as I do that sometimes contracts don't hold up. So what do you do? You file an affidavit of interest or what you'd call a memorandum of interest at the courthouse and that secures it so that they can't sell the property without you. It's, it's like clouds of title or something, guys. I don't know a lot about it, but I do know that's what he's doing and it works. It got him five wholesale deals in three weeks by offering to help pay for their probates in their situation, okay? I have an investor that pays all these people's mortgages while they're waiting, okay? He helps them pay their taxes. He maintains the property. He has a person going over and cutting the grass. I mean, he's just hand-holding these people. These people have no idea what to do. So, Again, please continue to send your questions and answers in. I will be answering them shortly here. Um, I've got multiple people who've sent questions in. We have about 15 questions so far and three people who have raised their hands. I will be answering questions here shortly. So please send in your questions as you're thinking about them by hovering your mouse down to the bottom of the screen and your Zoom controls will pop up and then you can absolutely send your questions in through there and just by hitting the Q&A. Okay, sorry guys, my meeting controls. Okay, so the do's and don'ts of marketing. Never talk about their unfortunate situation. Notice that my letter not one time offered condolences and sympathy. Now I know a lot of you guys are out there are told to offer condolences and sympathy. Why would you send a letter to somebody and bring up their negative situation? I'm so sorry to hear about your loss. My deepest condolences and sympathy. May I buy your house at a discounted rate so my wife and I can reap the annualized benefits of having your property and, and, and reap the residual rewards of running it out? No, absolutely not, guys. I actually had somebody who wrote that in their letter and it was absolutely terrible. Do not talk about somebody's unfortunate situation. 
in your marketing. It's not a good strategy. It, it brings up a negative emotion. When you're doing marketing, the last thing you want to do is bring up a negative emotion in your letter. It honestly, guys, it really upsets them and it infuriates them, which is why you receive the hostile phone calls reaming you out for doing so. When somebody reads your marketing, you want them to think about things that can help fix their problem, things that address their concerns, overcomes their fears, and finds solutions. Put yourself in their situation. Say, okay, I lost my parents after 30 years of them owning this property. What would I be thinking? <coughs> sorry, guys. I mean, you, you're, you're not going to want to hear how sorry a stranger is that your mom and dad passed, but can I buy your property? That's the last thing that you're going to want to hear. So again, never talk about somebody's unfortunate situation in your marketing. You want to be simple, basic, direct, right to the point, addressing those problems, finding those problems, fixing them, overcoming their fears, and finding solutions for their problems. Those are the things you want to Focus on when you're doing marketing, guys, okay? Good things. I can close fast, cash, as is, less than 30 days. I don't, don't even pack, you know, just don't even rehab, repair. Just leave every single thing there and walk away. I will take care of everything, and not only will I take care of everything, I'll pay everything that you can't. Just offer things like that in your letter. And hey, if you can't, it's okay, then you don't have to. But it's just another option for you guys, okay? And that's what's going to make you different than anybody else, okay? One of those properties that he got, just so you know, was $26,000 he paid for. It. And he put $10,000 into the rehab and sold it for $150,000. Remember, guys, when these kids who are 40, 50, and 60 years old now sell these properties, they didn't buy their parents' property. They have no skin in the game. Of course, they don't mind taking a big fat discount. Any money that you put in their pocket is more money than they had to begin with. So, moving on. Sorry, guys. My clicker likes to work sometimes, and sometimes it doesn't. So, here we go. I'm sure you can hear me clicking my button. When this happens, I like to... Just use my computer and go to the next slide. All right, here's a realtor letter. Now, this is huge, you guys. I had a realtor. She was, I put Jane Doe, but her name was Peggy. She was a local realtor with Remax, and she didn't know how to write her letter. I wrote a letter for Peggy, and she got two listings within a week and a half of using our marketing letter for our pre-probates. Notice that I said pre because she reached out to them one week after the death and she said to the family members of John Smith, I now recommend just putting to the Smith family, okay? So to the Smith family, hi, my name is Jane Doe. I'm a local realtor with Remax. I would like to help you sell your property at 2000 Smith Avenue. If you would like to sell your property or just know the value of the property, please call me as soon as possible. Notice that as a realtor, she's not offering condolences. She's not offering sympathy. She's being direct right to the point and she's offering something for free. She's offering to let these people know the value of their property for free. And guys, that's one of the biggest thing people want to know is what is my property worth and how much can I get for it? Well, a realtor is perfect for something like that. If you are not an investor and you are a realtor, these leads are imperative for you. Things like pre-probates, divorce leads, code violations, those leads are where you should be targeting for because those are the people that are going to want to have you list their properties for them. And some of the first touches are the most imperative. So as a realtor, these are actually huge for you to work. I have a lot of realtors use our services throughout the nation and they do very, very well getting listings. And as I said earlier, also helping their investors that come to them to buy property and providing a list you know, that they can work for them and also their personal investing as well. Now, so there's the realtor letter versus, now here's an investor letter. This is a little bit different than the first one. The first letter I went over to you had a little bit more detail. And just so you know, these all don't need to be used for probates. These can be used for any marketing that you do. It's called simple, basic marketing. This one says to the family members, but again, we talked about not putting that and just putting to the Smith family. I need to change my slide. 
Hi, my name is Dave Turner. I'm interested in your property at 5500 Spring Lake Square. Please let me know if you're interested in selling or you know anybody in the area who may be. So that's it. Simple, basic marketing. Now here's a really good three-step mailing campaign. And this guy does a little small card in an envelope. And I'm sharing this. One of my representatives brought this to my attention because her guy was getting a 10% response rate with these little envelopes. He takes a first touch and he takes a small card inside of an envelope and he just says, he writes, I'm interested in the property at one, two, three, four, whatever street. If you're interested, if you're interested in selling, just give me a call. It's just simple, basic guys. There's nothing majorly special about it. It's just as basic as you possibly can get. But what's important, it is a hand written envelope. I'm sorry, yeah, card inside of an envelope. So it's a lot more personable than just something printed, okay? Now, he waits a, a month, 30 days, and he does his second touch. It's still another small card in an envelope. I sent you a letter about a month ago expressing interest in the property. And guys, this is perfect because this leads me into what to put in your first letter versus your second letter versus your third letter. One of the biggest questions I have is, Tangie, what do I put in my second letter, my third letter, my fourth letter? I mean, do you have multiple marketing campaigns? I said, no, I just have the one letter. Why would you want to send a different letter every time? Just put on the top of the letter, the second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth mailing campaign, Hey, I sent you a letter about a month ago. That's all you got to put up there. It's just, I sent you a letter about a month ago, or I sent you this letter below a month ago, expressing your interest in your property. Do you still have the property? Are you Have you considered selling? Please give me a call. Now, he actually changes it up on his third step mailing campaign. On his third touch, he sends an actual postcard we are a local investing company purchasing properties in a few select areas. And he completely changes the whole structure of the mailing to his investment business. And like I said, guys, this is working really, really good for him. So that's, that's kind of a three-step mailing campaign um, that I do recommend too, because it's really good. It's quick. It's easy. It's simple. It's basic. If your marketing budget doesn't allow you to do the six-step mailing campaign, something like this is good too. Um, I heard a guy today, believe it or not, a lot of people will say, well, do postcards work in probates? And I always recommend a handwritten letter, guys, and a handwritten envelope, because that's just the best way to go when you're working with such a personal lead uh, like that, such a personal situation, you know, a very sensitive subject. I'm always going to recommend handwritten, but uh, envelopes and handwritten letters, but some people can't do that, you know? And if, if you can't handwrite all of your letters, at least handwrite your envelopes. But this guy's using a postcard and he said it is the most simple postcard you could possibly think of. And he's getting like 15% response rates, which I was absolutely amazed from a postcard. So it worked really good. Um, why investing in foreclosures and pre-foreclosures is still in good in today's market. Did you know that foreclosures and distressed property sales still account for nearly 25 to 50% of all real estate transaction in some markets. Why pay retail if you're going to buy a home for yourself or as an investment, why not buy a foreclosure for half the price? A good rule of thumb is to try to purchase it at 50 cents on the dollar if possible in your market. Short sales, it's if the lender, listen, the lender does not like to be in the business of selling homes, but when a buyer defaults on the loan by not making their payments, the lender has no other choice but to take possession of the home and try to sell it to recoup their losses. The lender much rather prefers to be in the business of selling, the, the lender prefers to sell the defaulted homes quickly because they wanna be in the business of going back to doing mortgages. They don't, they wanna get out of selling homes, guys. They don't wanna be in the business of doing this. So REOs are still really good in today's market. Pre-foreclosures still work very well in today's market. The key to making money in foreclosure real estate is the same as any other. You have to buy low, sell high. We recommend purchasing everything and putting your offers 50 cents on the dollar, if at all possible, in your market. Exit strategies. There are so many, several exit strategies that are working so well today and they're so profitable. And the biggest one right now is wholesaling. A wholesaling of property is when you quickly fit flip a contract to an investor for quick cash without extending any of the money out of your own pocket. 
And here's what I can tell you about wholesaling. And the biggest mistake that wholesalers make today, okay, the biggest mistake is not leaving enough meat on the bone for the person that's going to fix and flip this property, okay? When you're a wholesaler, you, 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 a lot of people get into wholesaling and they think it's the easiest job ever. All they do is assign the contract, they make sure there's enough money in it for themselves, and then they bring it to 10 other investors and go, why don't you want to buy my property? Well, because you didn't leave any money on there. You didn't leave any meat on the bone. Guess what? When you're in wholesaling, you got to know how to estimate rehab and repair costs. If you don't, you are absolutely going to crush your buyer's list because guess what? No buyer is ever going to buy property from you again because they're not going to take you seriously. They are not going to take you seriously because you don't know how to estimate the rehab and the repair cost correctly. Do you remember earlier I said, know your job? In order to do this exit strategy, you got to know how to do it correctly. And doing it correctly is learning how to estimate rehab and repair costs very quickly. Okay, and if you don't know how to do that, then you need to get trained to do that because you're absolutely deteriorating the people that you have to bring properties to as your cash buyers. You don't want to do that. So make sure you know your job as a wholesaler. Know how to write a contract. Have a cash, have a buyer's list ready. Don't ruin your buyer's list by bringing a wholesale property to these people when you're not leaving enough bone, meat on the bone for them. Get a quick six to 15,000 for yourself. Let the buyer have the rest. Wouldn't you rather do 50 deals like that than maybe 10 the whole year? 50 is gonna make you a lot more profitable and they're gonna take you serious every time you come to them. So know how to be a wholesaler if you wanna be a wholesaler. And this goes back to me telling you to learn your job, guys. Retailing, retail, retail buyers are coming back in the market because of the historically low mortgage rates that we had, price appreciation, the tax credits that were being offered as well as the improving economic commission, conditions. So this is becoming more retail these days, guys. You're selling properties for a lot of value these days. Lease option. Now, this is huge, guys. I can't tell you how huge this is. Many would-be buyers currently have very poor credit, but they have a lot of money for a down payment. Now, listen to me. Option consideration, and they want a nice home to live in, you guys, and this strategy works so very well. I have an investor, and he swears by lease option. He's actually a really good speaker and he owns a real club. And let me tell you something. What this person does is he does lease options to buy all day long. And let me tell you, you can get five and $10,000 down with the lease, with the option to buy. And you know, most people will not stay in your property over two or three years. They will walk away from that lease option and you will get to keep the five, ten, fifteen thousand dollars, whatever you, they put down, you get to keep that. And you can turn around three years later and do it again and do it again and do it again and make that your instead of wholesaling, you can do lease option to buy. If you're struggling with wholesaling and you're looking for another way out to do things, lease option. Lease option is perfect, you guys. People will move out over and over. And you know why they don't stay? Your home was not really the home they wanted to begin with, you guys. Your home was a lease option. It was something that was an option for them at the time and the time only. Now they have used your lease option to buy. It has built their emotional mind up to realize they can buy a property. Three years later, their credit gets better. They bought a car, they bought some credit cards. Now they have an 800 credit score and guess what? They're eligible to buy a property now. They don't have to stay in your property anymore. They help, they, they have, applied and got approved to buy a bigger, better house somewhere else, and they're going to move out on you. So lease option is a great exit strategy, you guys. Rental. If you buy right over the long term, this is a great cash flowing strategy, guys, where you can reap the annualized returns of up to 20% per year and more. Testimonial, guys. I actually used to give away a free month at every real estate club I went to, every single month. Amanda Young come to the Tampa meeting. I'm not gonna say which one, but she came to a Tampa meeting and I was doing a drawing and she won a free month. I happened to win a free month of probate leads at my local RIA meeting. And at the time, I only had one 
rental house, which I purchased off the MLS. So list price, guys, she purchased this at list price. So mailing letters to her from a list was absolutely foreign to her. And with the help from Foreclosures Daily and using my standard letter, which by the way, it was the investor's letter that was simple and basic, that I, the second one that I showed you after the realtor letter, she tweaked it, mailed them out, and she received a call, made an offer, closed her first probate and subject to deal. One year later, because she rented it out, guys, her tenant bought the house, made an offer she couldn't refuse. She used the process, profits and turned it into uh, two more investment homes with a 1031 exchange. She turned one deal into two deals. And as a newbie, she couldn't believe how mailing letters would turn out to be the best deal she's ever had. And she highly recommends working with foreclosures daily. So there's a couple of testimonials that I've got on here, guys, but I'm not going to sit here and go through all of them. But I can tell you right now, these three testimonials bought a property within one month of using our services. Now, it doesn't always happen this quick. Look at this guy. $94,000 and he wholesaled it right away for $135,000. I got a guy that struck it rich two times with our probate leads. He made $150,000 on one property and $125,000 on another. He used us for a year, had multiple deals, you guys, $15,000, $16,000. The average wholesale deal is about six dollars to $12,000 you'll make on a wholesale property. But um, when he, he struck it big, let me tell you, on these two properties, it was, it was amazing. All right, so here we go. This is probates. This is pre-probates. This is code violations, evictions, inheritance, divorce leads. This is where you're going to get all those leads. All you're going to do is you're going to log in. You're going to see a home screen. You're going to choose which one you want, and it's going to bring you to a search screen just like this, guys. You're going to choose probate leads, Florida. Let's say it's Hillsborough, Pinellas, Pasco. And I'm going to open it up to Q&A in about 10 minutes, guys. Uh, let's say we're doing from the beginning of February, and notice that I've got 26 to 220. It's always going to be Wednesday to Wednesday. Sorry, it's not 220 yet. Let's do it to the 13. And then we're just going to go down and we're going to hit submit. And all of our leads are going to come up down here, guys. And look, you can export it right to CSV. Now, we do have the labels capability on there, even though I don't recommend labels. And the reason why, guys, is it's not personable. You can use labels if you're like a realtor or an attorney. That's different, you know. Um, Let's see here, let me make sure. So when you export the data, it's gonna look something like this. And let me make sure that you can see this. Let me see, I'm doing, okay, here we go. It's gonna look something like this. Are you guys seeing this here? You see a document type under the column J that says probate leads, somebody message me please and tell me yes. I'm waiting for your response. Now, can you see the Hillsborough County column J document type probate? All right, let's see here. Somebody just answered me. Let me scroll all the way down. Yes, oh, thank you, CJ, I appreciate it. Okay, so guys, um, let me close this out here. Okay, so here's what you get. You're gonna get the first name, right, which is the decedent's name, okay? Now, you're always going to have the decedent's name. Whether it's a probate or a pre-probate, you're always going to have the decedent's name. You're always going to have the decedent's address, okay? That's the property address. And you are always going to have the decedent's mailing address. Those three pieces of information are promised on a probate and a pre-probate. Decedent's name, decedent's property address, and decedent's mailing address. Now, on a probate and pre-probate, you are also going to get some property appraiser's data. And when I say appraiser's data, I mean like bedrooms, baths, and that's if it's available. Pinellas, look, Pinellas don't have it, but Hillsborough does. Pasco has it, but Hill, Pinellas don't. Pinellas don't like bedrooms, I guess. 
your property appraiser sites, Pinellas County is just not, leaves a lot to be desired. But anyways, the bedrooms and baths are on here, but they're not promised, guys. The year bill, we try to get as much property appraisers data as we can, the type of property. Now, notice that there's a personal rep, PR. PR stands for personal representative. What is a personal representative? That is the person who is now in control of the assets, and it is their job to liquidate the assets and settle this estate. That's their job, okay, guys? The PR is the prime person you want to talk to. Now, in Pinellas and Hillsborough, they're very generous with their information. You're going to get property appraisers, I'm sorry, personal representatives' names and addresses on almost every one. And see how I say almost? Look, Pasco don't have it. Pinellas does. Hillsborough does. Pinellas does. They've got the PR's names, PR's addresses. But it's not promised. If you get records, by the way, you never get more than 25 leads per week per county, and most counties don't have 25 a week. Pasco gets 15 to 20 a week. Orange County in Florida gets 15 to 20. Fulton might only get 10 to 15 in Georgia. Uh, Alabama, they might just get pre-probates only and not probates. I mean, we try to get as much as we can everywhere. If we can get it, it'll be on here. But I can assure you, you will never see a personal rep's name and address on a pre-probate. You know why? Because there is none yet. They just died last week. So on a pre-probate, all of your marketing is going to go over here to the property address. And you are going to address it to the Smith family, just like we talked about in the letter. Unless it's a probate and the PR's address is available, it gets addressed to the Smith family, unless there's an address next to the PR name because the mailing address over here is not the PR. This is the PR. If there's an address here, then your letter goes to this person, Jamela Tola. If there's not an address here, then your letter goes to the property address. Why? Because that's where they're going over to check the mail. People lose their parents when they're 50 and 60, you guys. Most people are gonna be responsible and they're gonna drive over, check the mail, you know, Call, cut the grass, check on the property, make sure people aren't looting and stuff like that. They're going to do their job. Now, if they can't drive over and check the mail, did you know they can have the mail forwarded for six months to a year after the death? Listen, if they're not going over and they're not checking the mail and they're not having it forwarded to them, you don't want to deal with them anyway, okay? So if there's a PR's name and address on a probate, great, send the letter there. If there's not, the letter goes to the property. Look, Attorney information, name, address, phone number. Sometimes attorney's email are provided. Look, in Pasco or Pinellas, they're provided, but in one of the other counties, they're not, okay? So notice, like, I, all of this is not promised, guys, but it's available in a lot of counties, and a lot of counties, it's not. So if you get it, great, contact them. In Pinellas, you got the best of both worlds. You've got their property address, the property's decedent's mailing address, You've got the PR's name, the PR's address, and you've got the attorney. So what your job is, is to send them all a letter. Send the property address a letter. Send the PR a letter. Um, call the attorney. Get the email of the attorney. Send my letter to the attorney saying, hey, this is, you know, CJ. Sorry, CJ, I just, you answered my question, so I'm going to pick on you. This is CJ. You know, um, I'm, I'm, I'm messaging you. Um, I'm, I'm emailing you because you're representing a probate case for um, you know John Smith over here on Hermitage Square and I'm interested in buying their property. Would you please forward my email to the personal representative and get me in contact with them as quickly as possible and please call me back. Oh, and by the way, I would also be interested in purchasing any probates that you may have that you may be handling on other cases right now. So I mean, your relationship, you're trying to build with this attorney is imperative, you guys, because when you build a relationship with an attorney, they'll start sharing their probate leads with you, okay? And guess what you can bring to them, guys? They're a probate attorney. Anybody guess? Anybody? Send it on Q&A. What can you send to them, guys? They're a probate attorney. What do you want them for? You want them to what? You want them to file the probate. That's right, guys. You can use them to file the probate on your pre-probate leads that you purchased. Not only are they going to file it for you, now they're going to do it at an even more discounted rate, and you're building a better relationship with them because you're bringing them business and helping them with their business, okay? So there's so many good things about building a relationship with these probate attorneys. Now you've got a list of probate attorneys right here at your fingertips. And these are people that are 
actually representing the probate cases on the list that you are working, okay? So there's multiple benefits to using pre-probates and probates. As you can see, it really doesn't matter. People are always so worried. Well, what am I going to get? Am I going to get probates or pre-probates? It doesn't matter. They're both amazing leads. One you might have to help them financially and one you might not. Okay. But either way, you could buy some of them now in both scenarios, you know? Um, so these are the probate leads and the pre-probate leads, guys. You want to send a letter to the property. If there's a personal rep available, clearly you want to send a letter there, no matter what, if you have that available. And if there's an attorney involved, you always want to message the attorney. So I'm going to give you the letters. I'm going to give you the six-step mailing campaign instructional. I'm going to give you the phone script on how to negotiate with the seller. And I'm going to give you the email letter on what to send to the attorney. Guys, I'm making this so ridiculously impossible and easy for you. And I'm not even asking that you buy any of it. I'm just asking that you... Contact me when you want to purchase some leads. That's all. And if you got till Friday to do it, to get that free county rather than pay 50% off. Now, let me talk to you about the foreclosures daily, guys, because I want you to see how we can help you at foreclosures daily if you're interested in getting the list pendants. In Florida, we are daily, but out of Florida, we are like monthly. So in Florida, this is where you're going to go to search your leads for the pre-foreclosures every day or the upcoming auctions. And here's what they're going to look like. Here's what, sorry guys, here's what they're going to, let me close out of that one so that I don't get that confused anymore. I'm going to just close right out of that one. Actually, I'll just bar it down. Sorry guys, something else is going to, there we go. They're gonna look like this. Let me make sure that you can see this. And this is a file date of January 30th. Let me go to my screen share real quick. All right, CSV, VIP, here we go, guys. This is the screen share on Foreclosure Daily. This is what you get on a pre-foreclosure, guys. You get the filing date, the case number, the plaintiff versus the defendant. And if you're in Florida, we try to get the list pendants that were filed the day prior, the day or two later, okay? We take that information, we put property appraisers data on it. So you've got the plaintiff, which is the bank or homeowners association or whoever's foreclosing on them, guys, versus the plaintiff, okay, which is the homeowner. The original loan amount, the deed book and page, the property address, the mailing address, the legal description, the original loan amount. This is information that's not promised, guys, but we try to get as much, at, see how some of it we can, some of it we can't. I mean, we try to get as much of it. Our researchers get paid per column, per row, per name. So we make it to where it's beneficial for them to provide us with more information for you. So trust me, when we want to see full cases like this, guys, this is what we want to see for you guys. Full cases, full columns. We don't like to see blanks, okay, guys? It makes our data look incomplete. We don't like that. But this, my point is, is this is how, this is how full we want our information to be for you. And this is how much the owner tries to make it to where you get as many information as possible. The more leads we can give you, the better off you're going to have to close deals and the more renewals we're going to have because our whole business is based off referrals and renewals. Now, I'm going to open this up to Q&A um, and I'm going to go ahead and share my video again. Stand by. All right, here we go. I'm going to go back to my presentation. Put that back up. We're gonna share that and do full screen. And then we are gonna start my video again, guys. And we're gonna open this up to Q&A, okay? We have a lot of questions. So I'm gonna to try to get through these as quickly as I can. I know a lot of you have been on here for an hour and a half already. So let's go. Hi guys, thanks for being patient with me. I really appreciate it. All right, let's go to Q&A. Go all the way back up to the top for the first person that sent in a question. Oh, yeah, I wish I would have answered this a long time ago. And Gary, uh, message me if you're still here. Gary had messaged me in the beginning of the presentation at 6 o'clock saying that he is not an investor rather than a realtor. Is this not for me? And I really wish I would have answered that. But I was trying to, and I just got confused when I tried to answer questions during the presentation. So, yes, it's definitely going to help you as a realtor. And I think if you stayed on the call, you, you saw that for sure. Um, so I answered that live. Now, Lori, 
Lori Johnson says, this all works. You all need this. Thanks, Lori. I really appreciate that. Um, Michelle, I've been, yeah, let's see here. Okay, so Michelle says that she's got a couple of questions. Is, 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 is getting uh, people wanting her to take off the mailing list, is this normal? And yes, it's absolutely normal. When you market to probates and pre-probates or anything you market to, it is very normal for people to uh, want to ask you to take them off their list because that's just a, that's going to happen. You're going to get return mail. You're going to get people that want you to take them off the list, but then you're going to get sales. You're going to get people that want you to buy their property. So that's, uh, that's good. Should the weekly files be grouped together and sent out monthly? No, they should be mailed out the second you get them in your hands. So when we make them available to you every Wednesday, we're going to email you to let you know your data's ready. You should be mailing them out on Thursday. Hopefully they'll get that marketing by Saturday and they can take their weekend and think about it and read it over and call you back by Monday morning. Okay, can we define the process from the time I get the weekly list to the interval of mailings? Okay, on the six, well, I think we went over that. That question was asked at 611, but I'm gonna assume that you saw that now, Michelle, and if for some reason you missed it, let me know because I could send that. Anything, anything that I went over tonight, I can send out to you in an email. So that six touch mailing campaign, I'd be more than happy to forward that to you. A pre -pro okay, Angela, a pre-probate is when a death certificate is filed regardless if there is an attorney involved. That is absolutely correct. Listen, even if they didn't file a death certificate, we're going to give that lead to you one week later. Some counties, if the death certificate's being held or whatever, will still pull the obits to get those pre-probates for you. One way or the other, you're getting weekly fresh leads. How many missed monthly payments before the lender files a list pendants? It's typically three. Once somebody misses three payments, a lender has every right to file a list pendants against the homeowner. So typically it'll be between three and four months they'll file that list pendants, but sometimes it does take a little bit longer depending on the bank, Angela. Okay, what is the recommended time to mail? Six months. You want to mail for six months depending on what list you're working. Well, for an example, I mean, if you're working an absentee owner list, you don't have to do a six-step mailing campaign for six months. One or two mailings will suffice on an absentee owner list. So you want to do a six-month mailing campaign to people that are going to be in a pro going through a process like probates, pre-probates, divorce leads, so on and so forth. Okay, I just basically answered both of her questions. We are in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, Bassey asked if we were in Atlanta, Georgia, and we are, and how often is our list updated? Every single week nationwide. And just so you know, we can get pre-probates anywhere in the nation, period. Even if probates aren't available in your area, because let's say that your courthouse is stingy with their data, we're gonna pull pre-probates as a backup, which by the way is, we're the only company I've ever found that does pre-probates. I don't think you'll find pre-probates anywhere else in the whole nation, guys. Um, we're literally, we made it up. But what happened is we started providing probates for people. And there were certain areas we couldn't pull probates in. So we started pulling obits and then death certificates. And what we found is what an amazing asset we have here. Because what we found is the investor that we didn't get the probates for ended up marketing to the pre-probates. And he's still a client after 13 years from when we started doing pre-probates back in, gosh, 2000, and I don't even know what year it was. It was 13 years now he's been a subscriber, and that's how long we've been doing pre-probates, and it was actually by sheer accident, and it ended up being one of the best lists that we have alongside by site with probates. Um, let me see. How often is our listing updated to remain current? Like I said, weekly and fresh. And do we provide multifamily and apartment listings? We're more single family residential type. Um, we're not really huge on multifamily guys. I'm just telling, I'm just being honest. Okay, we talk about how to talk to the, pre, the probate attorneys. Okay, I'm gonna do that real quick because uh, Sid asked a very good question and I really didn't touch on how to talk to the attorneys. So let's, let's go through a phone call. When you're gonna call the attorney, you've got the attorney's name, right? We're calling an attorney. Let's say his name is attorney John Brighton. 
Your job when you call that attorney is to get the email. And a lot of times attorneys do not like to talk to you and the paralegals don't like to give their email out. So your first phone call to the attorney should be to try to get the email address. And you can search on Google too. A lot of them are provided on Google, but let's, let's boil it down to the ridiculousness said, let's call an attorney's office. Hi, I'm looking for uh, attorney John Brighton's email. I seem to have misplaced it. I'm trying to shoot him over a real quick email again, and I just can't seem to find out what I did with it. Do you see what I did there? I acted like I'm a client of, you know, attorney John Brighton's. I'm just kind of looking for his email. I seem to have misplaced it. I need to shoot him over something real quick. And, and it's all true. I don't have his email. <laughs> Somebody misplaced it because it's not on our list. Anyways, that's a really good start off. And then she's going to give you the email, okay? Or she's going to give you hers, right? But after that, your main goal when you're talking to the attorney is, oh, and by the way, I'm Sid. Uh, I'm interested in a probate case that John Brighton is representing on Hermitage Square. Can I talk to him? I'm interested in purchasing this property. Oh, no. Okay, well, let me leave a message for him. And I'd also like to leave a message for the personal representative. And their name is John Smith. So if you could leave a message for the attorney and let the personal rep know that I'm interested in purchasing the property, that'd be great. So your job is what? To get the attorney's email and to leave a message for the attorney in the PR if you can't talk to the attorney, okay? If you do get the attorney on the phone, just simply tell them who you are, Sid. I, I work with probate leads and pre-probate leads. By the way, I wanna bring all my pre-probates to you and I wanna pay you to do their probates. But while I got you on the phone, I want to ask you about this one particular case that you're representing. I'm interested in buying this property. And then just proceed from there. Good question, Sid. Um, Rebecca, what do you file at the courthouse to protect you if you offer to pay for pre-probates? That's a very good question. Some courthouses like to call it an affidavit of interest. And some people may know it as a memorandum of interest. So some courthouses may be calling it an affidavit of interest, and some courthouses may call it a memorandum of interest. But either way, what it is, is it's basically clouding the title so they can't sell it without you. It's not really a contractor's lien, but it's kind of like something like that. So yeah, memorandum of interest or an affidavit of interest. It's basically saying that you have a financial interest in this property. Okay, Sid. Stand by, please. I'm sorry, guys. I think I mentioned in the beginning of this call, I've been a little bit sick, so I keep having to take drinks. Um, what do you also talk about how, okay, I did that. Sorry, Sid. All right. Okay, can you show the realtor reach out again at the end of the webinar? Okay, are you talking about the realtor letter? Is that what you're talking about, Destiny? Is the realtor letter? Because if it is, I can read it for you right now. Um, so basically it's, hi, I'm a local realtor with Remax. I understand that you may have a property for sale. If you do, I'd like to buy your property. I'm sorry. Hi, I'm a local realtor with Remax. I understand that you may have a property for sale. If you do, I'd like to sell your property. Oh, and by the way, I, I can sell your property at, at, you know, blah, blah, blah. But you basically want to just go up. Here. I'm sorry, guys. I'm getting very confused. I thought I could reiterate this, but I look at the camera. I got a little nervous. So basically what you're doing is you're saying, I'm a local realtor with the Remax and I'd like to sell your property. Oh, and by the way, you know, I can let you know the value for free. So that's what you want to do. Oh, and by the way, I can let you know the value for free. Okay. One more time. Hi, I'm a local realtor with Remax and I understand you may have a property for sale. I'd like to help you sell your property. Oh, and by the way, I can let you know the value for free. So was that what you were looking for, Desante? Go ahead and answer me and let me know if that's what you were looking for. I can also send you these marketing letters. Um, if you remember in the beginning of the call, any person who is on this call today is going to get a copy of every single letter you saw on this slideshow, as well as the six-step mailing campaign. And you're also going to get a copy of the attorney letter that we recommend that you email to the attorney. So Rather than me reiterating the letters, I promise you, when we, when we get done with this webinar, I'm going to email every single person on this webinar all that marketing material promised, okay? Um, Bassie's asking about if I can talk about a little about the master lease. I'm sorry. Um, I'm, I guess I'm not really sure what you're asking there. So if you can maybe reiterate that in another way, or maybe it's just something that I'm not familiar with. Um, 
DeSante, what are your thoughts on putting your business address on the outside of the envelope cards? You know, I've had a lot of people ask me that. And it just depends on if you're wanting to market to them as a business. You notice in our three-step mailing campaign earlier, DeSante, uh, or DeSante, I'm not sure if I'm saying your name right. I'm so sorry. But we actually uh, had that guy in his two-step mailing process. He never mentioned the business at all in any way. But the third one he did. So if you're going to announce the fact that you are in business, you know, it's fine if you want to put your business address on there. Um, but a lot of people will, some people will use a P.O. box. Some people aren't comfortable with using their houses for sure. You definitely don't want to do that. Um, so, I mean, he did on his third step mailing campaign, but that's kind of on a preference basis. It's up to you. Um, let's see here. I wouldn't worry about it, to be honest with you. I would not put a bunch, I wouldn't put your suite number. I wouldn't go through all that because you just never know who's going to show up at your business. I don't think that's a very good idea at all, to be perfectly honest with you, not with these types of leads. So this person wants to know, Reese, um, uh, is moving to Arizona, to Florida in the next couple of months. Could he apply the add-on county to a separate state? You absolutely can. If you want to add another county in another state for, as your free county that the owner is offering you tonight and by Friday, you absolutely can add it to another state. And also, if you move, you can move your county to wherever you move to, too, as well. Um, just so you know, we've had people that get up and move in the middle of their year subscription and um, the owner lets them move their county as well. It's not typical that we move counties around for you, but we will make an exception, something like that from time to time. Uh, CJ. So um, I, I can send you a copy of the webinar replay. It won't be available till maybe a couple hours tonight or maybe tomorrow. So it might regenerate another email for you because I want to get the marketing out to you as quickly as I possibly can. So I plan on sending all the marketing that was promised right after the call. But the owner um, is the one that handles the um, webinar replays. And as soon as he gets done with his end of it, I will go ahead and make sure that gets out to you too, CJ, as well as anybody else on the call. You don't have to ask, I promise. I will send everybody a copy of the webinar replay as well as all the bonus materials promised on this call. Okay, so Angela, we can provide data for NASA in Suffolk counties, New York. And here's what here's the thing: like counties like Pennsylvania, uh, New York, New Jersey, certain counties we can get pre-probates in instead of probates. But under no circumstances is that a bad thing. That's a very that's a very good thing. It's it's fine because it really doesn't matter. People spend so much time thinking you have to have the PRs, names, and addresses. Well, no, you don't. Somebody just told you that. That's all. It is very much their job to check the mail, liquidate the assets, and settle the estate. You know, my mom's in New York. I'm in Florida. You know, God forbid, I don't want to lose her. But when I do, and I will, because we were all born to die, guys, we know this, okay? One of these days, you might see me on this list. God, I hope not. <laughs> but uh, my point being, guys, is I'm I'm going on 47, 48 years old myself here. I'm, I'm, I'm close in the near 50s here, okay? So when I lose my parents, I'm a responsible young woman. I've worked since I was 14 years old, you know, and, and I'm a hard worker here at Foreclosures Daily, and I've been doing this for a really long time. I'm a very responsible person, responsible mom, responsible wife. Um, what, I, what I'm trying to say is I'm going to check my parents' mail, and if I can't check my parents' mail, I'm going to have it forwarded to me. My dad's local. I'll drive over and check his mail weekly. My mom's, you know, six states away. I'll have her mail forwarded to me. So, I mean, I'm responsible. Most people are. If I'm not checking the mail and I'm not having it forwarded to them, you don't want to market to me anyways, you guys. So don't worry about the ones that are not. Don't be sitting there trying to figure out PRs, names, and addresses so you can just, listen, if you want to take it one step further, fine. Take our list. Go to the courthouse on the probates pull the 15 files that had real estate. And you say to yourself, well, why would I wanna do that when I'm paying you to provide the data to me? And that's a very good question because I know y'all are asking that right now. Because I went through the 300 records. Our team went through all 300 records and pulled John Smith up on the property appraiser site. And we went through all 50 John Smiths to find out who died with property. And we've done all that research for you. So do you know how easy it would be for you to send somebody down to the courthouse and say, hey, every week or every month, take these 15 records that Tangie gave me and go pull the, PR, the file and give me the PR's names and the addresses and the PR's 
phone numbers and the heirs and all their phone numbers and addresses. To, you can do that. And if you do that, I can assure you, you'll be very successful. Okay, I'm getting a lot of yeses. I guess that's when I asked if y'all could see my screen for the spreadsheet. Perfect. Thank you, Reese. Uh, says that our Florida data seems to be very, very complete. And uh, what does our Arizona data look like? Now, I'm not gonna show each county and each state on here, but I can tell you that they're all gonna have they're all going to have decedent's names, decedent's address, decedent's mailing address, property appraiser's data, and if it's probates, it may or may not have the PR's names and addresses in the attorney's names, phone numbers, addresses, and emails. Okay, this person has pre-probates already and they have a quick question. And, and if you have pre-probates, do you mail to the mailing address? Okay, so you wanna mail to the property address because that's where the mail is typically being handled. You can also mail to the mailing address if you want to, but we do recommend the property address because that's where the mail is typically being handled. Yes, there will be a replay. A pre-probate. What is a pre-probate? Jason, a pre-probate is a person that died last week. We have verified they own real estate and we're providing the lead to you one week later. And the benefit of working a pre-probate lead is not only will you be first at the door, but sometimes they'll inherit the property via a trust and you can buy it now. Do we do this in Texas? Yes, John, we do it nationwide. Now, some counties we can do probates in, some counties we can do pre-probates in, some counties we can do both and we recommend that you purchase both. There's a benefit to working each list and it's called striking the iron while it's hot. Is this service available in the USA? Do you have, we do not have this in Canada, you guys. Uh, we are working on getting it in Canada and as soon as we do, we'll make it live on our website to let everybody know. Okay, well, yes, we can do it in Nassau and Suffolk and it's gonna be pre-probates in New York. Now, Bill says, do you recommend somebody else answering the phone other than yourself? You know, I got a person that sends a letter out to all the persons in pre-probate and probate, and they have an answering service answering the call. And they have, I'm sorry, they have a, like a voicemail thing, pick up the phone, and it says press one if you have a house to sell, and two if you don't. Now, two, if they press two, it hangs up on them, completely just hangs up on them. If they press one, they're transferred to Pat Live. And then they have the list of questions that Pat Live goes through, and then she sends it on to the investor. So by the time it escalates from them having a house to sale to Pat Live and to him, it ends up being a very nice lead for the team to work. Oh, I do recommend either or, Bill. I think that at first you should answer your own phone if you can, but if you can't, you should follow that step process because it works really, really well. You're welcome. Sante said that she was, that's exactly what they were looking for, is for me to reiterate that realtor letter. I'm sorry I stumbled through that a little bit, guys. I know so many letters in my head, I get them confused sometimes. Our service is not available in Canada, we answered that. Thanks a lot, Thomas. I'm so glad that I answered a lot of questions for you. Guys, I'm wrapping up my Q&A. Uh, I'm almost done. The, the training webinars, I, I, give, I gave one in October and it's now February. So I would say we're probably gonna do these three or four times a year. We've been talking to the owner and uh, we have a lot of traffic coming to our website on a daily basis. And sometimes it's very difficult to um, reach people when you call back. So I'd like to have three or four of these per year, but at the end of the day, it is up to the owner, but he's let me do two in the past four months. So it's looking pretty good. And as far as the people on the call, I know there were, there were 450 people registered. I have no idea how many are actually on the call. I, I haven't had time to look at any stats, but I know there's a lot and there's still a lot hanging on actually. Okay, so this person basically says, thank you so much. Uh, I recently subscribed and I'm very happy to be joining the Daily Foreclosures team. Oh, thank you so much. We re we're so glad to have you. 